The theme is sports. That's what this album is all about. It has to do with guys who have played, guys who wanted to play and couldn't play and didn't play. It covers all these areas because I was all of that. <laughs> I just want you women to remember one thing. You think you have something that men can do without. It's a lie. Because I will tell you this straight to your face that a good case of Jock Rash is better than a good woman. <laughs> I will tell you that now. There are times when we were out on the battlefield and we just kept ourselves from scratching because we knew when we did scratch it was gonna be good. <laughs> Many times I put off scratching for, for maybe three, four days because I knew that when I touched it, I thought, oh. Uh, yeah. So anytime you women get highfalutin, just think, of, what is Jack Rats? He won't tell you, but it's so beautiful you can't describe it. Only Fels Napa can wipe it out. First off, is the fact that a lot of men lie. Most of them do. 90% of the men lie. If you've never seen him play anything, if he begins to tell you stories about how he scored the winning touchdown, he lies. Because ain't that many cats ever scored the winning touchdowns? Ain't that many cats ever scored touchdowns? Ain't that many cats ever made the field? First of all, you can't play but 11 people. And secondly, there are a lot of guys that's got to be on the 5th and 16 that never gets to play unless there's an absolute slaughter on either side. I know because I played on the ninth team. <laughs> on the ninth team, I was the only fullback that weighed 154 pounds. I outweighed some of our linemen. <laughs> on the ninth team, the only dudes on the ninth team, and you had to have nine teams in Philadelphia because the, the counselors, as the school said, if some of these kids don't make the team, they will kill themselves and all that. So that, these are the guys I played with, the guys who would kill themselves because their fathers played football before them and they had to be on the football team. So they put them on the ninth team to hold the dummies. A lot of them wore glasses. Most of them were rejects from remedial gym. You, all you had to do to get a D in remedial gym was just stand in front of whatever you had to do. So you just stand there in front of the parallel body as a D, go away. <laughs> if you played on the ninth team, of course you held the dummies. And it was very important. It's important to the first team that you be in the right place at the right time because many of the linemen really don't know what to do if you're out of place. The coach says, why didn't you hit him? Well, he wasn't there. The linemen get upset about that, you see. And besides, they never know the fullback's plays. When you break out of the huddle and you say, what, where, where was I supposed to, where am I? I don't know, all I know is I have this guy here. I played for Germantown High School and one of the greatest moments for me was when we'd break out of the tunnel. I was always the first person out there and I got all the cheers, because I was first. I broke the paper, they had this big paper, round circle. And, I, and all my boys from off my corner said, did you see Cos break that paper, man? broke the paper and I'd run and sit down on a bench and never be seen again you know and my boys used to root for me send cars in the game and the coach never paid any attention to him but I was always ready man I was ready for any position he called out if you wanted me to play tackle I would play that and score a touchdown I'm telling you no when you play on a 19 you ain't got nothing to lose man I'd go in and tackle, and I knew, you know, they'd give the ball, and I'd steal it from my own man and run for the TD, man. What the hell was he gonna do? Put me on the 10th team? <laughs> so I steal the ball, make a hero out of myself. So I'm sitting there on the bench, he got the helmet in my hand. Most of my boys off my corner ran cross country, which takes a lot of guts to me. I mean, to run two and a half miles to make yourself throw up. That's, uh, <laughs> And you come in with flat hanging off. And... <laughs> Girls never watched cross country runners. I know they were never at the finish line. They couldn't take it. Oh, look at that. Yes. <laughs> so 
I was sitting on the edge of the bench. Now, this is a true story, man. Everybody will tell you a story about how they scored a winning TD. You listen to this one. I am sitting there holding my helmet, and the guys, my boys, my boys, put Kyle in the game. Put Kyle in the game. Let him call the toss. Do anything. You don't have to play. Just let him call the toss. Ball game's going up and down in the field, and I couldn't believe it. Coach turned around. You know, high school coach. Go on, it's all the time. What are you doing, sir? <laughs> Call me. And I, I... <laughs> Look out, America. <laughs> Look out. Man, when he said that, all the guys on my corner stood up and said, what? I said, okay, coach, I'm ready to go, man. Tackle fullback, I don't care what you call, I'm gonna score something out there. He said, give me your jersey. He said, give me what? He said, give me your jersey. Hurry up, take it off. Johnson just ripped his jersey. So I took off my jersey. 13 degrees below zero. Took off my jersey. I gave it to him. I went and sat back down on a bench, my skin stuck to the metal bench. And then I started to root for my jersey. And I said, go ahead, jersey, get a TV. And my jersey scored. Then I started rooting for Johnson's pants because I was afraid that was next.